second steel layer has not yielded. Second steel layer has not yielded. Okay. Uh, the next step will be to get uh, next step will be to get the uh, forces in the steel layers, and we will get the axial load and the moment respectively. Let's move on. Uh, for the first steel layer, for steel layer number one, we know that ES1 is greater than ESY, so as we have expressed in the previous page, uh, the first steel layer has yielded, has yielded. So, how do we calculate the force in the layer 1 then? We just use F yield times area steel 1, which is the yield strength of the steel in the first layer times the area of the steel in the first layer. We know that the F yield is 420 megapascals and the steel layer's area was given as 600 millimeters at the beginning of the question. So we move on from here. And when we multiply that, we get 252 kilonewtons. So for the second, so for steel layer number two, for steel layer number two, um, we know that ES2 is less than ESY, so this means the layer still has not yielded, has not yielded. So how do we calculate the force in the layer then? We just go back to our fundamental knowledge of the strength of materials and express as like here. Stress in the steel layer 2 times the area of the steel layer 2. And how do we express the stress from the Hooke's law? We use the modulus of elasticity of steel times the uh, strain in the second layer times the area of the steel in the second layer. So this means the modulus of elasticity, as you know from the beginning, is 200 thousand megapascals the strain in the second in the second layer was 0.00204 let's write it here and the area of the steel layer in the second in the in steel layer number two was 600 millimeters so we just directly write it here so fs2 let me plug on these numbers into my calculator. We get 244 plus 8 kilonewtons for the steel layer number 2. Okay, so uh, the, as the last thing for the concrete, for concrete, um, Let's recall our shape as given in the uh, beginning. So we know that the, the depth of the concrete layer was equal to K1 times C and K1 is equal to 0.85. We will use that value if not otherwise stated. Sometimes it can be 0.83 or sometimes it can be 0.87, but generally we will use 0.85 and C was given as 109 millimeters and as you all know this is the depth of the neutral axis from the uppermost concrete fiber to the um, neutral axis. So uh, for the concrete we will have a shape like this. Right, 
So this is the height K1C, which is equal to 0 0.85 times uh, 109 millimeters. And what is the width of this uh, block? It is, of course, 300 millimeters. Where did I get that? It was given in the beginning of the question as here, the width of the concrete uh, as given in this uh, shape, it is 300 millimeters. So our force in the concrete becomes with equal to this equal to this formula. So K1C, which is the um, height times 0.85 FC, which is the concrete force, times the base width, which is B. And in that case, the equation becomes 0.85 times 109 millimeters. Again, 0.85 times F concrete. And the concrete strength was given as 25 megapascals at the beginning. So we're going to use that one. And as the B, we will use 300. And our concrete FC will become, let's compute that with my calculator real quick. It becomes 500. 90 plus dot 6 kilonewtons, which is fairly simple to get. And as the axial force, we were, as you may remember, we were asked to calculate the axial force, uh, axial load on this cross section. So our M becomes.